Choot choot! All aboard for another episode of Leadnap Gaming. This week we're riding the Merchantman hype train. Banu! This week, CIG put this little tidbit onto the roadmap, stirring up the long lost cries of Gib for one of Star Citizen's most puzzling concept ships in the game. At one point blockade runner, one point mega freighter, and one point traveling bazaar, it really isn't that clear what the merchant man really will be. What hasn't helped is confusing concept art, not to mention a concept flip which has fueled beliefs that this ship is a real monster. So this week we're going to spend a little time talking about the history of the Merchy, as well as what CIG's own present admissions suggest is actually in the pipeline. Before we do, a quick reminder of our 10k sub giveaway. If you're interested in snapping up a Perseus to fly around with those merchantmen, make sure to smash that subscribe button and comment because each month five names will be drawn and when we hit 10k, someone's getting a Perseus. Details in the description. The Banu Merchantman is an old concept, dating back to the 2013 anniversary sale and part of the now paltry $27 million stretch goal. The ship predates most of the lore surrounding the Banu, and was developed by Emmanuel Shui. Unknown to most players, the ship originally was inverted, with the flight deck positioned at the front with wings flowing off, featuring a massive engine off a tail boom. It wasn't a huge ship, probably carrying a cargo load similar to that of the Freelancer Max. This made sense, it was the sort of ship you might try to slip past a blockading fleet to get down to the surface and sell your cargoes. It was also said to have a symbiotic relationship with the Banu Defender, which, given what we know today, was likely a nod to the Phalanx shield systems from the Tavarans, and would have made sense as the two ships would have been roughly similarly sized, making such tech useful. Almost immediately, however, the design got flipped, throwing a series of engines onto what had been the front, and putting some large guns for blasting through a blockade on the back. The redesign also potentially gave the ship more size, rescaling the concept to accommodate a bridge as it had been reimagined. The original Merchie is reflective of its original cost, a roughly $150 before the alien tax is applied ship. Again, this put this square in the zone of the max cargo-wise as we think of things today. Now flipped and somewhat rescaled, the ship became more of a freighter, getting big guns to blast through rather than slip through the blockade. Still, the written core ideas of the concept remained in place. The Banu are more communal and lack the privacy considerations humans have in Star Citizen. The ship's bridge opened to a central habitation space. The other major feature was a negotiation room that would overlook the cargo, where potential shoppers would meet and negotiate the price with the ship's crew, an instant hit with prospective buyers. Today these perhaps feel a little more exotic, but peek at any of the early concepts from that time and you'll see simple living accommodations, low room counts, and whatnot were really the norm. The original constellation designs, for example, were effectively a humanized version of the Merchantman. We have to be clear that the Merchantman was never small, but the original version wasn't too much larger than a constellation based on the art. Once flipped, it grew into what today we would consider a large ship with roughly three decks. Still, the total length is only 100 meters only 9 meters longer than a 600i, or put another way, 11 meters shorter than a caterpillar. Now, if this seems way smaller than you're imagining, there's a reason why. Three of them, really. To begin with, there's a lot of confusion in the concept art, in part because the Banu are much taller than humans in lore, therefore, each deck must also be taller than the human equivalent. What has really fueled this misconception, though, is certain concept art images. Take this one for example, perhaps the best example, and it's easy to get the impression that Murchie is the size of one of those Empire ships in Star Wars. This image has been picked apart for years and suffers from all kinds of scale problems. It is really best just to stick to the published numbers to get the best idea. Of course, that's the second problem. The Merchant Man has been updated as a concept over the years. As more Banu lore has been developed, the crown jewel of the Banu trade fleets needed more. The concept received an update that would feature an onboard bazaar, taking the place of but not replacing the negotiation room, which would now just be for VIP negotiation. 
Only thing was, at 100 meters, the Murchie had nowhere to put all of this, even though it had been discussed at the original launch. And the ship grew again, now to 160 meters, only 50 meters shorter than an 890 jump, and now almost as tall vertically as a 600i placed on its nose. The third and final problem has been a metric change. Since Star Citizen was launched, SCU sizes have changed slightly, but more importantly, the metrics used to determine SCU capacity has radically changed. At present, the Merchantman is listed as having a mouth-watering 3,584 SCU. This, however, is old SCU numbers. Keep in mind the Carrick also had thousands of SCU, but today has less than 500. This is because SCU in the past measured the total available volume of a ship, whereas today it measures what's classified as cargo grid. So today the Banu Merchantman sits as a monster of a closed hauler, at present the only closed hauler larger than the C2 Hercules. Only the C2 may end up being the better deal because the Merchie may end up not being a mass hauler at all. Like the Kraken Privateer, the truth for the Merchantman may be most of its cargo is tied up in shop volume meaning you cannot buy and sell at trade terminals with those allocated SCU. A bazaar, however, is a sweet deal, especially considering CAG has placed this feature since the Merchantman got it at over $1,500. But that really should be the caution alarms for the player base. The Merchantman has already seen two price hikes into its present $450, and it's already gone through extensive production only to be scrapped and redone again and again. CIG has once again placed it onto the roadmap, which has certainly brought up the excitement, but also the refrain. This is the third or fourth time it's been put on. Will it get removed again? The vehicle concept team has the ship again as no doubt trying to rectify all the problems the concept has. It's older than the Banu. It wasn't meant to be capital size, nor does it have capital componentry. But to fit the feature sets now promised, it must have that size, yet still run blockades. Perhaps worst of all, the Escheresque base of the concept for the Banu has turned instead towards this organic form, and the Merchantman really doesn't retain that externally. They are slated to complete their portion with the Merchantman in July of this year, and the Euro Vehicle Design Team will carry the torch all the way into December for completion. The amount of time slated compared to what CAG has cited in the past suggests this Banu Merchantman is a complete redesign no doubt taking lessons learned in numerous ships completed since white box images and updates given to us over the years. This isn't bad news at all, but current owners should be aware. The ship you're expecting may be radically different, smaller, and far more limited. Not least of these may be the Bazaar falling off completely. The new cargo refractor is set to complete weeks ahead of the concept team finishing the ship. However, there's no mention of cargo sales systems, nor is any part of the in-game economy in place to support players selling cargo goods to one another, or NPCs. This isn't to say for certain these elements won't be in, but we've already seen CIG pull ships that won't be feature complete and gold standard on release. It would be a blemish on the ship launch if the Bazaar is in but just a placeholder like the bar on the 890, or the salvage systems on the Reclaimer. We won't see any number of much demanded ships soon because their play isn't ready. The Merchantman's arrival in early 2022 with none of those mechanics in game suggests they may be omitted, still delivering a ship a big portion of the player base wants, a big cargo runner. As I mentioned earlier, it's also worth noting that the only other ship to receive a bizarre system is the Kraken Privateer, priced where the cost to develop the feature will certainly be covered. A massive number of Merchantmen were sold at the original $250 price tag. And in successive years, particularly as this behemoth dotted the roadmap for release, they continued to be sold in the 360 and now 450 price point. From a labor perspective, CIG has probably already burned through the invested capital to develop this ship, meaning all the future sales of the merchantmen must cover the current production to release the ship, and the cost to implement every one of its new game features. This is the real conundrum, because even though most of us ship watchers believe the Merchantman will see a soaring price on par with and surpassing the Carrick, which also used to sell for 360, the price hike will hurt CIG, and is likely to shape the final product. We know there are a number of secret deliverables this year, of which we know now that the Merchantman was one of. With the implementation of ship to station docking, the expanded cargo grid fixes, SDF shields, cargo refractor, and cargo decks, 
the player base should entirely expect the whole A, B, and perhaps even C to enter the verse in 2021 or early 2022. Combined with the C2 and M2 additions, the existing Cat and Carrick, the Merchant Man would release into a very crowded industry segment. And without a bazaar, there would be little to justify a $500 to $600 price point without offering SCU numbers closer to what the old numbers are. The catch is there are too many already owned Merchant Mans, the price hike only applying to anyone who decides on release to pick one up. But in a crowded segment, buyers looking to mass cargo will likely spend for the cheaper Hull C. Never mind the current verse not supporting mass cargo hauling anyways. For this reason, the Merchantman will probably be feature completed to remain at the 450 price point. The SCU will be more in line with other protected carriers, perhaps reaching as high as 800 to 1000 SCU. It really is in CIG's best interest to keep the ship as close to price point as possible, especially because if the ship doesn't deliver, it will be converted into cost savings on more expensive ships, banking the cost increase in CCU value. If the price sticks at 450, CIG won't lose more than it has already. I hope the Merchantman has the bazaar. I hope it has the cavernous cargo deck we have all dreamt about since 2013. I hope the gilded Escher-inspired decor fills the interior but the red flags make this out look like that of a game of Minesweeper. Buyer beware, and perhaps this hype train should slow down some. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think the merch is going to release like? As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, share this video with your Banu-loving friends, and I will catch you all next time.